once I asked my teacher what it means to be a religious person. And um, it was a rabbi, and he said that I don't know, but as a rabbi, I believe that I am commanded, I am commanded to hope. And that's probably one of the good answers, at least an, an answer to this question. When the Holy One, blessed be He, came to create Adam, He created a group of ministering angels and asked them, Do you agree that we should make people in our image? They replied, Sovereign of the universe, what will be His deeds or people's deeds? God showed them the history of humankind. The angels replied, what is human being that you are mindful of him? Let people not be created. God destroyed the angels. He created a second group and asked them the same question, and they gave the same answer. God destroyed them too. This is a Talmudic discussion from around the 4th or 5th century of the Common Era. Rabbis created this Midrash, a legend, as an inspiration to, um, or interpretation to, to the creation story. What lies, lies behind this legend is not a simply a question of God's intention, but a fundamental question of people's belief in humanity. By the way, when I asked this rabbi who gave me this uh, phrase that as a rabbi I'm commanded to hope, I met this rabbi a few years later and repeated this teaching to him back, just in a way to show off my knowledge and to, to demonstrate that I remember it so well. And uh, rabbi said, the rabbi said, oh, it has such a nice teaching. Who, whose, words is, who, whose words are they? So that, that, was, um, that was a very meaningful moment. Um, but coming back to the creation story in this Midrash, 15 centuries later, we can relate to this dilemma. Would the world be better? Would it be better if the world, if, if, if people didn't exist? We know that the world is a dangerous place uh, ecologically today. Many people think that our, generations doesn't do, our generation doesn't do enough to leave the world at least in the same state that we received it. But... Uh, and of course, preferably better. Some people think that today our morality is in decline too. We build walls and not bridges, and people become more individualistic and consume much more than we need. The first Torah portion seems to be in agreement with this position. After the story of creation, and a well-known conflict between Cain and Abel that led to a murder, as we know. After the fall of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, we read this phrase. The Eternal One saw how great was people's wickedness on earth and how every plan devised by human mind was nothing but evil at, the say, at, at all time. And that phrase can be very depressing to read. When put in a position of shortage and crisis, many of us begin to act selfishly, self selfishly, protecting ourselves and our families first. But does it mean that the world would have been better without us, without humanity? In contemporary Western society, a similar question is asked by some people. We are often called upon to justify the reason even to have future, to have children. Is our world good enough? Are we prepared to explain future generations why the world is in such poor state today? And are, are we bringing next generations to a worse world that we were born to? In her book, Christine Overall, Here it is. Christine Overall reflects on these questions and argues that the choice to have children is not just a pragmatic decision, but one with ethical repercussions. 
Christine overall considers a series of ethical perspectives of, of uh, the question of uh, having, having children, procreation, examining approaches that, um, that rely on reproductive rights, on fundamental religious, family and political values, and on the anticipated consequences of the decision for both individuals and society. She examines some of the broader issues relevant to the decision, including population growth, lack of resources, and she found that all usual approaches to the question inadequate or incomplete. She offers instead a new argument, exploring the nature, the, exploring the, the intergenerational relationship, which is not only genetic but also psychological, physical, intellectual, and moral. She argues that the formation of that relationship between adults and children is the best possible reason for believing in a better future for you, your family, your community, and humanity. And from the ground, the eternal one God caused to grow every tree that was pleasing to the sight and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It is the tree of knowledge of good and evil that is, that's, will be forbidden for Adam and Eve to eat from. Torah readers always notice the unusual name for this tree and often find a deeper meaning in this story. When you think that you know more than you can, possibly, when you can, when you can possibly know about the future of the world, about the dark times ahead, perhaps you take too much on yourself, upon yourself. A midrash explains, explain, explores this notion a bit further. Why was Adam created last? of all beings, to teach him humility. For if he be overbearing, let him remember that the little fly preceded him in the order of creation. In the next Torah portion, Noah will be offered an opportunity to build the ark for his, and his family to become the only family that would survive on earth. What, he, what did he do? He agreed. He didn't argue, didn't ask any questions or raise any concerns. Rabbis compare his choices to Moses, who was in similar position, always argued with God, asked God to forgive people and always had hope in humanity. Today's society gives us many reasons to lose hope in, hum in humanity and think that we and that the world would have been better without us. It especially becomes clear when you queue for petrol for over an hour or for food for over an hour and see human nature in action. God created a third group of angels after the first two were destroyed. And they replied, Sovereign of the universe, the first and second group of angels told you not to create humanity and it didn't avail them. You didn't listen. What can they say? What, can, 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 what then can we say but this? The universe is yours. Do with it as you wish. And God created Adam. But when it came to the generation of the flood, and then to the generation of those who built the Tower of Babel, the angels said to, said to God, were not the first angels right? See how great is the corruption of humankind. And God replied, Even to old age I will not change, and even to gray hair I will still be patient. On this Shabbat, Shabbat Breshit, we can begin again and create a new hope. We didn't, stand, we, we, we didn't start many problems of the world. We, we didn't cause them but we can start to solve them now. We didn't choose to be born and didn't, cho and didn't choose our parents, but we are here 
And there must be a reason for it. We didn't create this world, but we can make a choice to live it in a better state than we received it. We can choose to lead our lives and let actions of our community inspire others to see hope in humanity, even when all the reasons are against it. There are many reasons to see bad and evil in humanity, but we as Jews are simply commanded to hope. Can you hear a May this be God's will.